Jeremy Jackson is back in Discovery Bay. 26 years ago, a hurricane ripped through these waters, turning the staghorn corals into mounds of rubble. Jackson and other scientists inspected the damage and predicted the corals would rebound quickly, just as they always have. You know, we were the best and the brightest, and we got it wrong, totally, completely wrong. The scientists didn't factor in the additional stresses of overfishing and nutrient loading. As a result, Jackson spends most of his homecoming dive picking the weeds that have taken over his reef. All of those Elkhorn forests are gone, and all of those Staghorn forests are gone. Of course, what's most striking is that the forests of corals have been replaced by forests of seaweeds. What's happening here is another example of slow environmental decay sliding into a self-perpetuating collapse. The results are fundamental changes to the ocean. By taking everything we want out of the ocean and dumping in what we don't want, Jackson says we are changing its contents, composition, and chemistry. This is a time of very great change. It's a time of great opportunity and a time of great risk because things are really, I think most of us believe, at a kind of tipping point. Jackson says we're pushing the oceans back to the dawn of evolution when bacteria and jellyfish ruled. It's a trend he calls the rise of slime. I can imagine an ocean that would be a continuous dead zone along all the coasts. People won't want to live in places like Malibu. They'll want to live in places like Kansas or South Dakota to be away from the ocean instead of next to it. Remove enough fish or add enough nutrients, and what was once a coral reef turns into a weed field. A kelp forest becomes an urchin barren. Walking on a sandy beach becomes a slog through drifts of seaweed. The crystal blue waters of the Great Barrier Reef provide the backdrop for an incredible array of corals and sea creatures. It's Australia's aquamarine gem. But farther down the Queensland coast, the water takes on a distinctly different hue. In the last 10 years, Morton Bay has been overrun by a jet black, hairy weed called Lingbia majuscula. Local fishermen have a different name for it, fireweed. This ancient bacteria is full of toxins that affect everything it comes in contact with. Fisherman Greg Savage knows firsthand what it feels like. In 1996, when we couldn't work, we found, you know, we're getting more than rashes. Our lips were swelling up, skin off our lips. Our eyes felt like, like if you've had a well burn, it feels like you've got sand in your eyes. The inside of your arms were, were most affected around your private parts, up in your groin, from water dripping down. You know, skin off, skin off your private parts was rather painful. Researchers coming here to study the weed have also learned to avoid it. Just from being close proximity in the water, I had a rash between here and here. I had a whole range of pimples and swelling and rash all the way up my neck and around my face. And I had to get cortisone. I had to get... Morton Bay joins the growing list of locations around the world that are experiencing harmful algae blooms. These slimy phenomena thrive in areas where pollution, farm runoff and overfishing have altered the natural balance. The Lingbia infesting Morton Bay can spread across the seafloor at 100 square meters a minute and creates a cycle of decay that allows it to feed off itself. It may be the perfect slime. Just off Georgia's Atlantic coast, Grove Simpson is setting the nets on his 55-foot trawler. These waters used to support a whole fleet of shrimp trawlers. Now there aren't many left. But Simpson isn't fishing for shrimp. He's learned that he can make money by catching what had been a gooey nuisance that clogged his nets. In less than an hour, the nets are full. 2,000 pounds of cannonball jellyfish slop onto the deck in every direction. Compared with the shrimpers right now, they are making approximately around five, six, seven hundred dollars a week right here in the Georgia water catching shrimp. And we could stay right here around the Georgia water and work a week as they work a week and make a thousand dollars to twelve hundred dollars. These jellyfish will be exported to China and Japan, 
where spicy jellyfish salad and soup is considered a delicacy. Yes, they do. They tease me because I love it, and that's all I love to do, and they call me Doc Master, Jelly Ball Man. They call me whatever they want, but they know I make money. <laughs> this is the logical end to a trend spotted by fishery scientist Daniel Pauley, which he calls fishing down the food web. Fishermen first go after tuna, swordfish, cod, and grouper. When those fish are depleted, they target what was considered bait, anchovies, and squid. Some fishermen are even harvesting tiny shrimp-like krill. Fishing records show that 90% of the big fish are gone. There'll be many more skippers just like Grove Simpson who have learned to adapt. Because marine ecologist Jeremy Jackson says, humans have opened a niche for primitive organisms to rebound in ways not seen for millions of years. Nushwander, the sea lion, keeps getting lost. And the staff at the Marine Mammal Center in Sausalito thinks they know why. She was first discovered comatose under a pier in Avila Beach. Treated and released, she was found a week later far from the ocean in Sacramento. A new type of toxic algae has emerged on the west coast that produces domoic acid. And as it works its way up the food chain, the neurotoxin is causing mass die-offs of marine mammals. It also damages the brain's frontal lobe. And that's why veterinarian Francis Gulland has brought Nushwander to Raytel Medical Imaging in San Francisco. An MRI will reveal just how much damage this neurotoxin has done. The brain scans confirm her suspicions. Us non-neuroradiologists think she's got a little hippocampus. <laughs> We're becoming experts. Demoic acid causes nerve cells in the hippocampus to continuously fire impulses until they burn out and die. It's a cascading effect that produces seizures and abnormal behavior. Sea lions and other marine mammals are often referred to as the sentinels of ocean and human health. The sentinels are telling us something is wrong in the ocean. In the last decade, Marine mammal stranding spiked along with the number of harmful algae blooms in coastal waters. Since 1998, the five marine mammal rehabilitation centers in California have been overwhelmed with cases of neurotoxin poisonings. And it's forcing people like Gulland to make decisions about which patients can be saved and which ones can't. The prognosis doesn't look good. I mean, I'm convinced that she looks terrible, but, and she's already gone up to Sacramento once. Right. Like, how much do you make her go through? I think the sensible thing to do is to use nice lines. I'm okay with it. It makes I am sense too. to me. I mean, that's how we do it, right? Right. Okay. Okay. That. Fifteen cc's of sodium pentobarbitone and Nushwander's suffering is over. One last exhale and the sea lion's heart flutters and stops. Another victim, another warning sign that something in our oceans has gone grievously wrong.